you last week we did this ikea hack the bookshelves it turned out so good i'm really pumped about it but it's for my eight-year-old son's room and he is still short and he's not happy that he can't reach everything so he asked me to make a step stool so i'm going to do an ikea hack with one so he can reach everything i think it's going to be really fun because we're going to make it very fancy the first thing we're going to do is to assemble the stool and you're just going to follow the instructions from Ikea. It's pretty straightforward. And side note, I did get this shipped to my house. I live like 84 miles from Ikea and it costs $4 to ship it. Totally worth it. Okay, my vision for this cute stool, it's very curvy so it feels organic to me. I want to make it look kind of like a tree branch and use paper mache and plaster to give it like twig nubs and leaves and just like look like organic tree branch and it's totally unnecessary <laughs> because it already works great as is but I want to make it pretty and that sounds fun to me. The first thing I'm going to do with the stool is cover up the edges of the wood with painter's tape and I'm going to be plastering all over here and it's going to be messy so I just don't want this section to get messy at all. And now we're going to start cutting out the components for the flowers and the leaves that are going to go on the stool to make it look that really organic look. I'm using cardstock as the base and I'm just freehand drying them out and then cutting them out. I started with some leaves and now I'm doing some flowers. The next component I'm making for the stool are these twigs. So I am just twisting up a piece of newspaper covering it in masking tape and later I'll cut it to put on the stool. I made up some paper mache paste and it's really easy to do. All you gotta do is mix one part flour to two parts water and you add in a little salt to keep it from getting moldy. Then you just mix it till it's smooth. I made a small batch. So this is half a cup flour and one cup water with a tiny bit of salt. Now we're gonna make the middle of the flour. So all we're gonna do for this is wad up a piece of newspaper, put some wire around it and then cover it with masking tape. I'm also adding the cardboard for the flower around the middle of the flower, and I decided later that it's better to just put the paper mache on the middle of the flower first. Um, next, I'm going to be hot gluing the wire into the middle of the leaf, but what I also found on this is it's better to just use masking tape to hold it down. The next thing I'm going to do is use paper mache to cover the outside of the flower. And honestly, the flower is the hardest piece that I made to cover because there's all those like pointy petals but all you do is just get the paper mache wet and kind of do your best to cover it and fold it over the edge of the petals and getting the inside of the petals is also a little bit tricky so it just takes patience and it's also kind of dirty um if you can see i have a rag to the side of my towel and i kept that wet so i could easily wipe my hands when i was done so next i'm repeating the exact same thing but with the leaf and the leaf is much easier to cover and if you have parts where it's a little bit jagged you can just use scissors to to cut off the edge so the leaves much faster. I've been working away doing paper mache. The first flower I did, it's kind of wet and heavy still, I tried to paper mache the middle ball thing while it was in there and it just did not work very good. So what I've decided to do is to paper mache the ball and then create the flower thing, the petals, and now I can paper mache this part. So with paper mache, all you do is you dip the newspaper in the mixture and then you cover the stuff. And I think having ripped edges actually works better because um, it's kind of like they fuse together nicely when cut edges don't work as nicely. It's like all those ragged edges kind of like work together. So. This part's just messy, but you try to dip it in, get as much of the goop off, and then cover your item. And you just keep going until the cardstock is covered. And this gives it some really good, um, just, it makes it thicker. So it doesn't look like a thin piece of cardboard. It looks way more um, realistic. So it's just kind of slow and doing lots of layers, and then we've got to let it dry but soon we can put on the stool and that will look really cool. So we've made flowers, we've made leaves, and now we're gonna make the edge of the twig, which these kind of look like little cigarettes. So they're just the rolled up pieces of newspaper and I'm covering the end with the paper mache and covering the body with the paper mache. And this one goes pretty quickly as you can see. Um, and soon we can put it on the stool. 
Okay, I've been busy making all of the components for this. Look at my nasty hands. Here are the flowers, here's the leaves. And so I need to let them dry overnight. And then tomorrow we can start wiring them on here and um, making this look more like a branch or a tree, which will be really cool. These look like little cigarettes, but they're really supposed to look like, they'll look like branches. Like, you know how like a nub of a branch gets broken off? So that's the plan. Instead of waiting until the next day to let them dry, I've actually decided to just put them on today. And this way I can shape them. Um, because when the paper mache dries, it dries very hard. And as I shape them, I can get them exactly how I want them to look and they can dry on the stool in the way I want them to. So I drew a sketch before of exactly what I wanted where. And so I'm just following that and I'm trying to make it so that you can still climb the stool and it's still functional. And these are just for decoration. Okay, the stool is all dry. It's looking very nice. When the paper mache dries, it also really hardens up. So right now it's just held on with tape, but we're gonna paper mache over this to make it even more secure. And honestly, right now the, the flowers and leaves are a little bit getting lost, but once they're paper mache, then I'll plaster them and paint them. It's gonna look amazing. I mixed up another batch of paper mache, and now I'm going to use that to cover up all the masking tape and the metal on the legs of the stool. This will just give the frame of the step stool some continuity and give it a more organic shape, plus the screws will get covered up, which will help the aesthetic too. I let this paper mache dry for a few hours, and it's nice and stiff. I am seeing a few issues, so I'm just going around where I see them, and I'm like cutting them off because I really... Paper mache is all about paying attention to the details. Um, because if you see like rough edges, it's just not going to look as good. So make sure to clean it up and then we're going to add some plaster to it to really finalize this look. Oh, plaster then paint, but the plaster, you're not going to see any of this newspaper anymore and that's going to really, really bring it together, I think. And now let's plaster over the paper mache. This is definitely an extra step, but because I'm just okay with paper mache, I find it leaves me more rough edges that look DIY in a bad way. So the plaster gives it a more organic shape and bulks up the flowers and the leaves. So to create the plaster, I just mixed two parts of plaster of Paris with one part of cold water. I mixed it well, and now I'm using a paintbrush to start brushing over the legs of the stool, the flowers, the twigs, the leaves. Okay, word of warning, when you're using this plaster of Paris, it sets up so fast which is good because that means you can do multiple coats really quick, but I kind of let it dry on my paintbrush a tiny bit while I was working on this and I stopped to like choose a podcast and holy cow, it was so hard to get off. So use a paintbrush you don't really like and just be prepared that you got to work fast because already this is setting up and I just screwed it. So you have, you have very limited time, so use it as wisely as possible. Here is a closer look of the plaster and it is drying right now. So I'm probably gonna let this dry overnight so that we can paint it tomorrow and see how it looks finally. And wherever there's like rough spots tomorrow, I'll be able to sand them off, but they're just, it's still drying now. So I gotta wait a little bit. So the plaster on the stool has been drying and when it's dry, it's kind of turned this white color, but up close, it's a little bit, let me see if I can get this focus. Up close, it's a little bit rough. So I don't like that, so I'm going to start sanding it, and I've sanded a little bit right here, which you can see that's a little bit smoother, which I like. So sanding first. So I started sanding with this little hand sander. I was nice and delicate, but some chunks just started falling off wherever I would sand, so I quit pretty early on, and it's just got to be rough, I guess. So the last thing I'm doing is I'm taking white chalk paint, and I'm just going over anywhere that has plaster, and I'm doing this because I like more of a bright white color, and also the chalk paint has that matte finish when if I would have used like latex paint, it would have been shinier. So I like this because it keeps that really plastery look, the natural look that I'm going for. Here is the finished stool. I am really happy with it. I think it looks very twiggy. It's a little thicker and chunkier and not as smooth as I would have liked. I think maybe I should have skipped plastering over the flowers and the leaves because it kind of let them like really rough and hard and I wanted something soft. But overall, I really like it and I think it's a fun step stool that'll work perfectly in here.